Hey guys, so there's another big milestone today, right? We're down into the single digits, nine days until Columbus, and today we're talking about midfielders. Now, in case you missed it, the last couple of days we talked about the goalkeepers, we gave away three spots there, and the defenders, we gave away eight spots there. Today, we're gonna do eight midfielders, and we're gonna start with the starters, and we're gonna start there with our captain, Michael Bradley. Now, he has struggled at times, and he's gotten a lot of grief for it, but still, this guy is one of our absolute best players and one of the best players this country has ever produced. He's brilliant, and he's definitely, definitely a lock to start in Columbus. On the attack, we've got Sasha Kleshton starting at number 10. He's got that beautiful, beautiful cop mustache. That thing is incredible. A little bit wider, you might even call it a Dale Earnhardt mustache. But seriously, I don't know why we went away from Sasha for so long. He's a tremendous player, and now that he's back in MLS, he had a phenomenal year this year. He's almost kind of like the American Mesut Ozil with the way he's dishing out assists, and he's got a definite spot starting in our starting 11. On the wings, we're starting with Ali Bedoya, Eric Winalda's favorite player. Now, he does get a lot of grief from guys like Winalda, but he's solid, he's gritty, he's not gonna make too many mistakes, and while he isn't our best player, He's certainly not our worst. I think he deserves a spot to play against Mexico. The one time I can remember he did have a bad game was that friendly against Brazil last year. Remember where Jurgen yanked him after like 30 minutes? Jurgen had him playing defensive mid. That's not his position and that wasn't his fault, but that is classic Jurgen. And on the other side, you thought we were gonna leave him out? We're not gonna leave him out. Hershey Messi, Christian Pulisic. Look, I get it, he's 18, he's kinda small, and he's kinda inexperienced, right? But you know what? He starts and plays well and scores for a club team in Borussia Dortmund that's better than this national team. And for that reason, I don't think there's any question that he should start for us. All right, I'm done talking for a while. Let's talk about reserves. I'm gonna bring in Chris Combs for that. And Chris, where are you hiding today? Yeah, I'm undercover today. That's why I'm uh, wearing this trench coat here on the 1940s uh, private eye, private dick. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, those four are definitely our best midfield lineup. I mean, what what interests me, I guess, is uh, kind of where Klinsman may, may go with the rest. Um, you know, with no Dempsey around, I could see him definitely taking a bunch of uh, experienced, well, maybe not a bunch, but some experienced players uh, just to kind of keep the young guys settled. I mean, clearly he's trying to work in some, some youth, and I think if um, that continues, uh, it, it definitely uh, helps to have some, uh, some experienced players there to just kind of you know, keep them grounded, keep them settled when things don't go the way we expect, uh, especially good like when we're in Costa Rica. Uh, to me, that means we're probably going to see Kyle Beckerman. Now, I think everyone's kind of written him off after the summer. I, amongst others, had written him off long before that. Um, and I, I just, I, I think, I, I think he's going to be here. I mean, I'd say Jermaine Jones too. Uh, but I think Klinsman has kind of accepted that he can't keep playing three defensive midfielders. And Beckerman Bradley still, I don't believe that it's still not his preference. Um, you know, based on things he said over the, or kind of the, the lineups he's chosen, I haven't seen anything that says that, yeah, absolutely, he's done with that. So uh, the rest of the bench, to me, is based on, uh, there's going to probably be Beckerman there. I think it's also predicated on a 4-4-2. Um, and... and kind of the assumption then that a second attacker up top means that there are just fewer defensive midfielder positions. Um, I'm saying Graham Zussi um, uh, is one. I think, to me, he's sort of like a, a more workmanlike Bedoya. Um, he works hard. He plays both ways. That's certainly going to stand out with Klinsman. Certainly going to help fill the roster. We, we know how he likes guys that um, offer him flexibility. So I think that does a lot of it. Um, and on top of it, he's got experience, so that should definitely come in handy here. Uh, I really see Danny Williams making it. Um, again, Klinsman loves that he's a two-way player. He can certainly be frustrating, but he can also pick, a ball, pick up a ball in his own half, dribble it 50 yards down the field, and score an unbelievable goal. I mean, look, look at his goals against Brazil and the Netherlands last year. I mean, he does things that you see him come out of nowhere, kind of, and oh, he, he wasn't really doing anything. Oh, he didn't look like he was in the game, and then suddenly, boom, He's scored some amazing goal. Um, I, I just think he he's too um, he offers too much to not be included, even if even if it's just kind of as a secondary off the bench player. Uh, the fourth spot, I'm going Paul Ariola. Now, 
I'd still probably uh, lean Perry Kitchen or Jermaine Jones, uh, but I think to me, I, I'm, I'm making this call just to sort of a, uh, bring some youth in and go with Klinsman's focus on attacking. Um, I could go either way, but I think with Dempsey missing, like I said, we're going to see a shift to um, uh, a shift in some of the call ups. So I, I think that that's going to change kind of who. Um, who comes in? That's why I think Beck, uh, Beckerman will be there, and so I think in, in, at his expense, then we won't see Perry Kitchen and probably not Jermaine Jones. Um, I, I do have uh, Kitchen though, kind of in my honorable mentions. I mean, again, I'd rather see him than Beckerman, um, and I think probably come March we could see him. Um, but Dempsey's absence definitely shakes things up. Like I said, it, it's it's going to make something happen there. Uh, Jermaine Jones, he certainly hasn't aged as much as Beckerman seems to have over the last year, but. Um, you know, despite his Copa uh, and and uh, September World Cup qualifying uh, qualifier call ups, I just think Quinsman prefers Beckerman Bradley over Beckerman uh, over a uh, uh, Jones Bradley. So I think um, with without an ability to field three defensive midfielders, there's just no real spot for him. Um, uh, Caleb Stanko, I, I I'll give him a, a call out here. Uh, he, his first real game, I mean first. Was it first start? I, I can't think of hand, but his first real game for the U.S. was uh, in a in a qualifier. You know, it, I mean, it was against TNT and it was in Jacksonville, so it's not like it was an away one. But still, anybody who's getting their first real chance in um, in, in a qualifier, you got to say the coach believes in them. Um, I see him more as a member of the team come spring, like come come the March qualifiers. But I think he's he certainly belongs to or certain certainly deserves to get a call out here. Um, and lastly, I'm going to note uh, Lyndon Gooch. Um, he didn't get a lot of chances. He didn't necessarily show a lot in the uh, most recent friendlies. Um, I think the real uh, the real it's really potential with him. You know, the the real uh, hope is that he's going to show at, with his age and his his abilities that it's going to turn into something special for us. Um, the the big thing I think that you have to note is that he's just not getting playing time at the club. I think if he was, we'd see we'd probably see him here. Um, I, I think if he can get some more in kind of the rest of the season into the second half of, of uh, the EPL, I think we'll definitely see him come March. We may even see him uh, more than just on the bench. But until then, um, I, I think Klinsman will probably leave him, if nothing else, then to help him go and try and earn that uh, that that spot to. Uh, get him some playing time. The other thing that I was going to note, and this is all just kind of a what if sort of potential idea. What if uh, we actually saw Cameron playing alongside Bradley? Now it does require us to change the center back pairing. It's not really my favorite thing to do, but we all know Klinsman loves to. So could it be a possibility? I don't know. Um, there are an awful lot of people who are calling for it. For it. Um, Cameron himself has said that he'd like to play uh, midfield for club and country, so rather than trying to move around. So I think there is a possibility for it. There is a chance. Um, I'm not calling for it, but if it does happen, I think I well, I, I'd swap Jermaine Jones for uh, Kyle Beckerman then. Like there's there's just no need for Beckerman if we're going to have Cameron out there. Then I would put uh, Jones in because in the end, I do think Jones is, well, Jones, there's no thing. Jones is the better all-around player. I think Klinsman just likes the role Beckerman plays. So those are my ideas. Um, some of this, uh, it's not quite spitballing, but some of it, yeah, of course, it's all a guess. Who knows? Um, so who, we'll find out in a few days, um, but I, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, Chris. Well, that's four spots left. The forwards, we're going to be talking about them tomorrow. We want to hear from you. US Fan TV on Twitter, usfantv.com is the website. Until tomorrow, see ya.